The following video has been created without the use of AI. Please support your human content creators by liking and subscribing and commenting something down below. Thank you. Peter felt a little out of place. It was rare he traveled to the virtues. Even rarer that he came to this virtue. Normally he went into diligence to participate in a barbecue or temperance for the best coffee in the afterlife, but... Humility? He cared for it, of course, like he did for all of heaven. But he found it to be a dreary place. The seven virtues were heaven's equivalent of held circles. Dimensions that could be accessed via the banners that floated around heaven's central city. Chastity was akin to a beautiful garden, where couples could frolic in the monogamy and chastity for all eternity. Temperance was a land where milk and honey flowed freely over beautiful meadows and small towns. And as already mentioned, damn good coffee. Charity had beautiful farmland, the nicest animals and, of course, very charitable people living there. Diligence was an endless American suburb with equally endless barbecues and hunting trips. A conservator's wet dream. Kindness was similar to charity, just instead of growing crops and food, they grew just the most amazing flowers and it always smelled sweet like a spring morning. Patience was probably the closest to central. An amazing mega city made from marble, patient souls were just unable to just stop. They patiently continued like they were still alive even had jobs, probably the hardest workers in heaven. But humility? Humility was the odd one out. It wasn't beautiful, artistic, at least not compared to the others. It wasn't golden. Heck, it wasn't even that clean. No, the humility banner was a very well-organized checkers pattern of brutalist structures made from concrete that reached high up into the sky, which was equally dreary. In fact, the humility banner was the only one where it rained almost daily. At least it was a pleasant rain. Just harsh enough to cause a clanking on windows, but not too annoying to soak one dripping wet with just two minutes. There was also very little green, only on the roofs of the structures and the central square of Nine, which always contained a little park, where the only places where plants grew. Honestly, Peter had no idea how the humble souls could live here. It was even more depressing than Earth. At least to him. He looked at the little card in his hand. On it was an ID number and the location of the square where your home was located. As sad as the buildings looked, they at least were unique. So once he saw the building you lived in, he was certain he could find his way back to it by memory. Returning the card to his breast pocket, he looked around as he walked. The angels around him had relatively neutral expressions, but he could sense satisfactory auras from them. Did they really like it here? His gaze hovered over a small cafe. The ground levels of the structures were dedicated to various coffee shops, bars and even nightclubs. The angels that sat there were mostly alone in their seats eating ice cream, sipping milkshakes, or were occupied with their phones. Maybe it was just imagination, but they seemed happy. But how? He bumped into someone, and just as he was about to apologize, the angel already did, but Peter couldn't help himself. No, 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 I I'm sorry, I wasn't looking. The angel blushed, apologized again, and just zipped past him. Well, this certainly looked like how you acted. He still remembered when you came to heaven. One of the many souls who spent years walking the golden path to central, 
and that they finally were put where they belonged. No one knew how far their journey was. He just told himself that this was simply to give him some off time. But St. Peter also understood that traveling the road, shedding all the worldly ills, did something therapeutic. Not to mention, about 30% of the couples in the chastity banner found their significant other on the road, so perhaps it did more than anyone realized. Finally, Peter stopped in front of a tower. Same brutalist art style. Cold, uncaring concrete. It looked a bit like a very late-game Jenga tower, as if blocks had been removed, while others were randomly sticking out. He entered with a quiet gulp. The inside was drab, too, a black carpet leading to four different elevators, each in a different color. A heaven-one receptionist angel sat at her desk, filing her nails, and as she saw Peter approach, she jumped up and saluted. St. Peter, sir! He blinked. Uh, former exterminator? He asked, jokingly. Uh, how did you know, sir? It had been a joke, being right surprised him. I, um... I'm just looking for someone. He said, giving her the card. The angel grabbed a pair of glasses from her desk and read the number out loud. She then typed it into her computer. A mechanical keyboard tipping was the only sound he could hear. Level 12. Her heaven name is Elizabeth. She mumbled. Good kid. Well, they are all. This is humility. She chuckled darkly. Uh, take the red elevator. Go left. It's room 1001. Thank you, my child. Soon, St. Peter arrived in front of your door. Looked exactly like any other. Minus the graffiti down numbers above it. Honestly, by now he was getting sick of concrete gray. The angel inhaled deeply. He wasn't supposed to pick favorites, but you had left an impression on him. And you kissed him. <sighs> he just really wanted to talk more to you. Not to mention, Adam wanted you for himself, just to annoy him. So if he could give you some guidance, perhaps you would remain innocent. Gently, he knocked on your door. A bit of sweat ran down the back of his neck. Yeah, just a friendly visit. No intentions at all. But when he opened the door, seeing you peek out from the crack, he couldn't help but blush a little. Hey there, Elizabeth. Your eyes widened. St. Peter, you hushed, opening the door fully. What are you doing here? I thought you are busy. Peter shook his head. I took some time off. Gently smiled down at you. I thought I promised you that I'd come to you. You did. And finally you smiled, stepping aside excitedly. Oh, where are my manners? Come in! I, I was just about to make some soda. You rushed back into your kitchen with a quick, Feel at home! While he wandered only a few footsteps into your apartment. It was... Not what he expected, and yet definitely what he saw coming. The floor was smooth, naked concrete, just like the rest of the structure, but your walls had colorful blankets draped and nailed over them. Gave the place some much-needed color. The windows, too, showed at least the central park of your three-by-three three square. Walking towards it, he looked down, seeing angels jog and cycle through it. And just 
barely in the distance he saw a pond with colorful dots moving around them. And, um, seems like it was duck season in the banner. The entrance door led directly into a living room. It was quite spacious. Two sofas, even. With a glass coffee table, a TV with a video game console, and a desk with a computer on it. It depicted the pause menu of what seemed to be a rather quirky-looking block game. It seems as if, when he had come, you were in the process of mining some blue ore-looking thing. <laughs> Safe to say he never played Minecraft. Moments later, you stepped out of a red wooden door that led to your kitchen. In your hands were two glasses that fizzed quite strongly. Here. Ah, oh, thank you, my child. He took the glass you offered. After a quick smell test, he recognized the concoction as a syrup do-it-yourself soda with wild berry taste. The two of you sat down on one of your sofas. What brings you here? he asked. Uh, well, the honest answer was, I couldn't get you out of my head. He inhaled silently through his nose. These three seconds he thought about what to say, though they felt like hours to him. Or you just innocently smiled. I was wondering how you were feeling. You appeared exceptionally dejected when you arrived. Oh. He hoped deeply that you had forgotten that you flirted with him. But why? Perhaps he was embarrassed? Um, hmm. let me explain. After we separated, I did as you told me. Walked into the Senate building to get my virtue signed. Was a bit like waiting for a dentist appointment. With a, well, non-human looking creatures around you. He nodded slowly. The amount of... Uh, Harry and somewhat animalistic angels had drastically increased over the last 50 years. Probably had to do with certain cartoons. But when I was called in, I was met with the most adorable little angel. She had gray skin and white freckles. What was her name? You tapped your chin. Millie? Uh, Emily? Uh, something like that. I, I was never good with names. Peter nodded patiently. It was a bit like a visit to a therapist. She asked me questions, emotional ones, how I was feeling and stuff about my life. At least the stuff I remember from the road. Yes, Forgetting things is normal on the golden road, my child. Essentially, your mind forgets all information it doesn't need. You know, stuff like, on January 2nd, 2020, I went to buy groceries. Those useless memories that just get flushed on the memory hole. Anything that affects your personality you keep, though. That was interesting, you thought. Uh... Afterwards, she gave me an information paper which advertised my virtue to me, and I was given a place in Central to stay whenever I want to visit, and that's it. Her pleased smile, his gaze moved around the room. Hearing you so pleased and calm was making his heart beat faster. Um, apparently I'm a Cyclops angel. You looked up at your halo, which was a big, winked, flying eye that you could not see through. It looked back at you and blinked. Thankfully, you had gotten used to the sight of it. When you first had died and arrived in heaven, you found it disgusting. You returned your gaze to Peter. And what do you think of your banner? It's amazing. 
You put so much emotion to that that he was taken off guard. It's... Uh, pun not intended, it's heaven. I get to spend all day at home playing video games, and when I want to go out, there are all these coffee lounges where I just sit and get a sweet drink that should barely classify as a coffee and sit down in a bean bag and just... He leaned back and sighed deeply while pantomiming holding a cup. A little bit of happy drool rolled past your lips as you thought about it. And the lo-fi music! Oh, the lo-fi music! Peter didn't know exactly what lo-fi music was, but seeing you so happy, his heart fluttered. In fact, it felt like it wanted to fly right out of his throat. After a moment of bliss, you caught yourself. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You swiped the drool away. I'm glad you're happy. How could I not? This is all I ever wanted. There's no stress, no bills to worry about, no things to achieve outside of my video games. It's just... <sighs> Humble existence? Yeah. Was that a pun? No, no, Peter didn't make puns. Or did he? Wait, was he trying to lift the mood? Did you give him the expression your mood was down? Your mind raised, and after a short silence of no more than five seconds, you asked, uh, What about you? He blinked surprised. What do you mean? What did you do? He blushed and looked down at his seat. I was doing what I always do. Greed our fledgling angels. Uh, paint. You, you paint? He looked at you. No one ever showed this much interest into the things he did. Outside of his friends, of course. Wait, yeah, you were his friend. He had come to visit you out of the blue and you didn't push him away. You offered a drink and you had done... Something else when you first arrived? You were totally friends? I, uh, paint. Yes, mostly landscapes. I don't like painting people, but I wouldn't mind painting you. He said so quickly and without thinking that, as the words were played in his mind, he quickly started sipping from the soda in his hand out of embarrassment. Paint me? You said. Why were you repeating him? Sh sure, I mean, I if you think I'm pretty enough. Humility really was the right place for you. I think you are. He said and you blushed hard. Looking down at your glass, exhaling through your mouth. Yeah, thanks. I, I, I hope I didn't overstep a boundary. He quickly interjected. No, no, you didn't. The, the man I have a crush on since I came here just gave me a compliment. How would I feel bad? C crush Peter felt sweat built up in his forehead. It was getting a little hot. Embarrassed, he looked away. Something he used to quickly pull at his clothes to cool off. The silence that followed was deafening. Well, I... He tapped his chin and thought. How would you describe a crush? You bit your lower lip. You weren't sure as to where this was e escalating, but... It's a strong, sometimes unreasonable feeling of romance that usually remains not expressed and when kept under wraps doesn't last that long. He nodded slowly. And what would you call it when two people have a crush on each other? Oh god, why do both of us have to be bottoms? was the thought that came to both of you at the same time. M mutual attraction. The silence was deafening. It seemed as if no one was going to make the next move. Though both of you knew what it should be. 
His eyes narrowed slightly, and as he said the quiet part out loud, his eyes narrowed slightly as he said the quiet part out loud. I think you know what I'm thinking. You're smart. I, um, I just think I just. I just need to say this, uh, as motivation, uh, also, um, I would like your verbal consent to kiss you. You huddled a little closer to him, and then placed your hand on his cheek. Immediately he leaned into your touch. He was enjoying it. Good. It was clear that he wasn't experienced at all. Thankfully, at least you weren't a virgin. You could at least try and lead, right? You leaned forward. Your lips hovered over his. Her mission granted. Your mouths touched for a second time. But now that you were empowered by your virtue, your divinities clashed. And strangely enough, this didn't make it worse. It was as if your holy energies were fighting for dominance. Like a magnet, you felt attracted to him. And simultaneously, you both wrapped your arms around each other. He was feeling what you were feeling most definitely. Him desperately grasping around your hip, trying to hug you as tightly as possible, while yours were crossed over his shoulders, using your hands to turn his head, trying to feel as much of his wet lips as possible. Your mouths opened, tongues intertwined, melting into each other. Your eyes rolled back. His energies, of course, were far superior to yours. He was a saint, after all. The shocks moved throughout your body, making you shiver in delight and lust. It was beautiful. It was perfect. His hands gently explored your body, and you ruffled over his hair. You hummed and moaned as you rubbed your bodies against each other. Until you squeaked, your body went limp. With a short expression, Peter let go of you. You fell backwards. What's wrong? You were completely out of breath. It was strange. His divinity, pleasure, overpowered you completely. And then it had felt like you were hit with a thunderbolt. An arm lied over your eyes. Elizabeth! You raised a finger, and he went quiet. Truth be told, right now St. Peter wanted to leave, run, and never come back. That's how bad he felt for hurting you. Though he himself didn't know exactly what happened. He had just felt really good. It took you a few agonizing minutes to regain your composure. Your hair wild and it's completely disarray. You sat up, staring at the floor. Heart racing unrhythmically. To the point where it was painful. It's okay, you huffed. Maybe we just overdid it. Uh, are you sure? You looked at him through a veil of your hair. Please, please don't get the wrong idea. It was hard not to stutter as your mouth felt numb and jittery. You reached a hand forward, barely missing his cheek. To say a face, you just slid it down from his ear until you gripped his shoulder. The times are always awkward. He blushed so hard he wanted to melt onto the floor. Then the next time we can try again. 
Hearing you say that filled him with a hollow hope. You inhaled deeply through your nose. It took a great effort of concentration. As placing both hands on his cheeks, you forced a smile. P please promise me this next time. Please. Gently you placed a hand on yours. Only if you're fully okay with it. I never want to hurt you again. You leaned forward, pressing your lips on his forehead. Thankfully, it seemed like a second brain shock wasn't in the books today. After twenty minutes of him apologizing and trying to do things for you around your apartment, he finally built up the courage to say goodbye. For now. With a cold heart and a face as red as a tomato you left through your door. At least you didn't kick him out. At least you said you wanted to try again. But as he turned to his right to go to the elevator, he bumped into a familiar face. Instantly, his feelings of shame and regret were replaced by disgust. Jeez, Pete, I'm right here! Chuckled Adam mockingly. He had forgone wearing a mask, which just made his smug expression even more hurtful. Snickering, he nudged Peter with his elbow. Ah, look at you! Crazy hair, red face, you two were fucking... Disgusted. Peter turned his head away. <laughs> no. He said directly. And I don't think I have a will. Ah, so I have free reign now. Ah, come on. Our little game hasn't even started. Tears were coming from Peter's eyes now. For a moment, Adam remained quiet. And then sighed. He just couldn't see a man cry. Bro? The first man to walk the earth placed his hands on St. Peter's shoulders. Bro, what happened? Come on. After biting his lower lip, Peter confessed to what happened. And Adam had to admit to himself the fact that he wanted to mock Peter rather than help him was... Scaring him a little, but he managed to contain himself, for now. Pete, you can't just go around kissing souls, you know. You, we, are saints. We're like three steps above a normal soul. Almost defiantly, Peter looked at him straight in the eyes. <laughs> and what about you? Your harem? How can you, one of the few people stronger than me? How can you have so many girlfriends at once? It took Adam a moment to reply. He was impressed with Pete. He... He really wanted you. He was upset. He was angry. Wrapping his left arm around Peter's shoulder... Adam began to gently nudge him forward as he started to explain. Pete, Pete, you have to slow down. Screwing with a soul takes control over yourself. Like a lot of it. You have to be really gentle. Like, really gentle. Even the demon chicks I let into my bedroom, I only screw really gently. Because one bad move and poof. I have a bunch of ashes in my bed. <sighs> Where big, juicy, round ass was just a moment ago. Trust me, it's a terrible feeling of getting blue balled. Peter tried to only absorb the most necessary information from what Adam was saying. The two men entered the elevator. Pete, I'm gonna do something I thought I'd never do. I give you a favor. Adam couldn't believe his own words. 
Though I want a favor in return at some point. Got it? Peter sniffled. Time. Go ahead. I'm gonna coach ya. Now don't worry, I ain't making you cheat on your little girlfriend. But it does mean you're only gonna get the theory and not the practice. Alright? Adam could feel Peter's reluctance. And as a little bonus to sweeten the favor. Grinning, Adam placed a hand on his chest. I solemnly swear I ain't gonna seduce your little girlfriend. Promise. It's all yours. And hey, this way if you screw it up, it was all your fault. Adam snickered, but... Peter couldn't help but smile, even though it was only the mere hint of it. I... I, I guess... Thank you, Adam. Hey, thank you for making it to the very end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and please remember to like and subscribe. But before I say goodbye, I would like to shout out all of my lovely channel members, especially my darling stewards Husky HD17, Bella Mare, Mystic Jade111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. I couldn't do this without your help. Thank you for your continued support. Anyways, I hope you have a nice day. Goodbye!